In this lesson, we're going to look at the Great Depression and the effect that this had on international politics. Well, what was the Great Depression? It began in October of 1929 in New York in the USA with the so-called Wall Street Crash. What happened was that a lot of people had bought shares in the American stock market. Not just rich people, but ordinary people had bought shares as well. And the shares in the stock market became overvalued. At some point in October of 1929, people started to realise the shares were worth too much. They started to sell the shares and the shares started going down in value. What began next was a period of panic selling. People saw that the shares that they'd bought were going down in value, so they tried to sell their shares as quickly as possible to avoid losing money. This made the value of the shares go down even more and created more panic selling and more, a higher drop in the, in the volume of share prices. So panic selling caused a huge drop in the price of the shares. This led to an economic crisis. Really, in a matter of weeks, billions of dollars were wiped off the US economy. And the US was plunged into an economic crisis. Banks failed, businesses failed, huge unemployment. And because the world economy was very dependent on the United States, this had an effect worldwide. Let's have a look at a little bit at how depressions work. Now this is obviously very simplified. Now normally in an economy, the public, the consumers, they buy goods from businesses. And when they buy goods, whether they're washing machines or cars or whatever, hotel rooms, they're making payments to those businesses. And part of the payments of the businesses is to pay the workers. So the workers get wages, the wages go towards the consumers, they make payments for goods, and so on. So the money and goods are flowing through the economy in this way. Now, in the Depression, the public at large had lost an awful lot of money. So consequently, they had less money, they were buying far less goods from businesses. Because they were buying less goods, clearly there were many, much less payments flowing towards the businesses. That meant the businesses Two things. Number one, why make a lot of goods if you're not selling them? And number two, you're not getting money, so you can't afford to pay so many workers. So you have to make some workers unemployed, so there are less wages, less money going to the public. They can make, buy less goods and so on. It's a vicious cycle, a cycle of economic depression. Let's see how the crisis played out across the world. Well, one thing was that a lot of countries around the world did something called protectionism. The idea was protect the industries and the businesses in your country by placing high tariffs, that is high taxes, on imported goods from other countries. The idea was to protect, obviously, the businesses in your own country, but what it led to was a collapse in international trade, which in the end actually hurt everybody. How did the depression radiate out from America? Well, just as an example, much less silk was bought from Japan. That caused an economic crisis in Japan. Because American industry needed less rubber and tin, it, the price of rubber and tin fell in Burma and Malaysia and Thailand. In Australia, which, developed, which depended heavily on exports of wool, Less wool was being bought, so wool prices fell, and Australian farmers experienced an economic crisis. Again, in Argentina, it was a big export of beef. Less of that was bought by the American consumer. The price of beef fell, and Argentinian farmers and the economy fell into a crisis. The same with Brazil and coffee. Less raw materials were needed from Africa because the US factories didn't need them. People weren't buying as much. That plunged a lot of African economies into the Depression. And, of course, American banks stopped making loans to businesses in Europe. America had replaced Britain as the world's banker. That caused European businesses to fail. And many banks asked for their loans back as they were in trouble. And that caused huge crises, especially in Germany, as we will see. Let's have a look at the effect on the United States. In 1928, the year before the Depression, 
The United States produced four and a half million cars for export. That's compared with half a million cars for the entire Western European output. That's Britain and France and Italy together made half a million. The USA made 4.5 million cars for export. So you can see just how big the US export economy was. In 1929, the value of US exports of cars was worth half a billion dollars and more. By 1932, that had fallen to only $76 million. You can see the collapse in international trade. There was a generalized fall in manufacturing, not just in cars. Wheat as well, exports of wheat. Before the Depression, $200 million. After the Depression, this had fallen to $5 million. The fall in the price of wheat and agricultural products really hit American farmers very hard. And it happened at the same time it coincided with a climate crisis in the Midwest. And there was a lot of genuine poverty and hunger in the Midwest of the United States. As a consequence, the isolationism of the United States increased. This man, President Roosevelt, was elected in 1929 in America and he promised the so-called New Deal. He was going to spend a lot of government money on big government projects to try and get the economy working again. This government spending, though, he could only get the American government to agree to this if he sided with the isolationists in the American government. So as a consequence, the United States really focused nearly all of its attention on dealing with problems inside the USA and was more isolationist, less concerned with world affairs. This isolationism encouraged the fascist dictators. It also made Britain and France more cautious because they knew whatever happened, they couldn't rely on the United States for any help or support. It encouraged Hitler. Again, he didn't have to worry about potential interference from America. He didn't have to worry about that. Here's a big example. We'll look at this in more detail later. later sorry. But in the 1930s, Italy invaded the African country of Abyssinia. Now, the League of Nations should have been able to use trade sanctions, but the United States, a non-league member, simply continued to sell oil to Italy. The Depression had a profound, a very deep effect on Germany. It was the heaviest hit of all the European countries. Here's an example. In 1932, production had fallen by 60% from 1928. That's a massive fall in production. And it meant by 1932, a third of all of the employable workforce didn't have a job. And that's when you lose somebody without a job, that means the family has no income, it's going to suffer from hunger, potentially you're going to get homeless, you get kicked out of your house because you can't pay the rent. Big social problems come along with this. Farmers and factory workers were very heavily hit. Farmers, because the price of agricultural produce fell dramatically, they could find it, they found it hard to make enough, to produce enough to feed their families. Factory workers, because of mass unemployment and falling wages. Who stepped in and offered what seemed to be solutions to the Depression? Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party, with very simple slogans. Strangely, they remind you of Lenin's slogans, actually, work and bread. In 1928, the year before the Wall Street crash and the Great Depression, the Nazi Party had only 12 seats in the Reichstag, the German parliament. By September of 1930, this had risen to 107, and certainly the Depression played a part in this. There was also a rise in support for the Communist Party. In fact, many German voters, as, as Hitler said, they saw democracy as weak and worthless, and some drifted towards the extreme left and the Communist Party, and some drifted towards the extreme right and the fascist Nazi Party. A lot of unemployed meant that people joined street gangs, communist street gangs, and the street gangs of the Nazi Party, so there was violence there. Hitler used the fact that his brown shirts, his street gangs, gave an impression of order. And together with propaganda and other things, by July of 1932, the Nazi vote had ridden to 230 seats. 
So the depression was certainly one factor which helped Hitler gain power. As you can see from this picture, they also used mass rallies and the psychology of enormous crowds and rallies to create emotion and to give an idea of organisation in the chaos of Germany. How did the depression affect Britain? Well, it wrecked British industry. Again, it made the British more worried about their empire. The, the government had less money and therefore it didn't want to do much apart from try and look after its empire and the people inside Britain. The government was very worried because it knew it didn't have the financial, it didn't have the money to fight Japan and Germany, didn't have the military resources to fight both Japan and Germany. This made it very cautious about getting into a conflict with either of them. Defence spending in the early 1930s was reduced because the government was trying to spend money, trying to get people back to work inside Britain. This is at the same time that German military spending was increasing dramatically. How did it affect France? This is a quote from Josef Goebbels, and he was actually the Nazi propaganda minister. And he said this, 1933 is the year that Hitler got power, and he said... In 1933, the French Prime Minister should have said, Hitler cannot be tolerated, but they didn't do it. They left us alone and let us slip through the danger zone. So the point that Goebbels is making there is back in 1933 when Hitler took power, Germany was still very militarily weak. And France could have done something about Hitler at the time. They could possibly even have invaded or got rid of Hitler, but they didn't do it and let gave Germany enough time to rearm and become stronger. So why? It took longer than Britain and the United States because the French economy was more agricultural but eventually the industrial crisis hit. It meant that the government also had a lot of problems. It was trying to pay out money in war pensions to all of the World War I veterans. It was strapped for cash. It didn't have a lot of money. Defence spending was cut dramatically. They were focusing largely on the Maginot Line and not on their army. And the government was extremely disunited. There was fighting between extremists, between communists on the left and extreme right wing in the government. And so the government was not united against Hitler when he came to power. In summary, the United States became increasingly isolationist, trying to deal with problems within the United States. Protectionism called the collapse in international trade, which made the depression even worse. It helped Hitler get to power in Germany, and it made Britain and France more cautious as they knew they couldn't depend on the United States, and they were dealing with the problems of the depression in their own countries.